tell us about this investigation because everything I've been reading about what you guys are into says that this is a massive, massive problem. Well, it's a massive problem in general because the number of people who are dying from prescription drug overdoses is almost 14,000 people a year, which is very close to the number killed, murdered by handguns, which is just uh, maybe 16,000 a year. So it's a big problem. We are looking into the abuse of prescription pads. Uh, printers that are authorized will give to doctors, will sell to doctors the prescription pad. Criminals have now figured out a way to steal a doctor's identity, using that identity to get a prescription pad fraudulently. And we've already identified about 5,000 of these prescription pads that have been obtained illegally and have been turned into uh, legal drugs illegally. And that uh, was the one with Corey Haim. We found that one of the doctors that had been, um, his identity had been stolen. And that was an illegal ring that had grabbed that drug. So we, we have to tie that in. We don't know actually that Corey Haim actually got it, but his name was there and the prescription was fulfilled. So we assume that's what happened. And if he was taking, by the way, 80 drugs a day, then uh, it didn't just come from all the doctors. And he was seeing a lot of doctors. He was going to a lot of pharmacies. And I'm not just talking 10 or 12. I'm talking a lot more than that. But to take 80 a day, he'd have to go to illegal syndicates if he was going to sustain that habit for any period of time. Well, that's what we were talking about earlier. Uh, 80 pills, Mark was saying at one point in, in the past, 80 pills a day for Corey. You said you were taking 50 Vicodin a day. Mm -hmm. How were you getting 50 Vicodin a day? Um, I got them off the street. I got them from different people that I knew who actually, oddly enough, had prescription pads from doctors that they would print out in their names and then sell them to me, or they'd have doctor's information that they would call into a pharmacy and That's pick it up. Yeah. That's exactly what's happened. That's the, and we're finding now that criminals have figured out this is a very lucrative kind of enterprise. So how much did it cost to get a prescription uh, uh, off of a pad? It, it depended. It depends on how many you got. And it, I personally never saw how it actually went down or how they did it. I just know that that's how they did it. Just know how they did it. So they get, they get the pad. They write into the printer and they say, I'm Dr. Smith. Give me, you know, 100 prescription pads. Then what they do is they often go to people, derelicts, homeless people, and they say, you take this prescription, go into the pharmacy and get these drugs. And then they come back, they give them a bottle of whiskey or something, and they grab the drugs and they go sell them. That's the way, that's, we've seen that pattern now, and we suspect it may be very widespread throughout California and the rest of the country. Okay, and, but this is not involving the doctors themselves. This is, this, this is a problem that is at the, the vendor level for creating these prescriptions. They're stealing the doctor's identity. So the vendor's not necessarily doing anything wrong, and the doctor's not necessarily Correct. doing anything wrong. But we also have cases of dirty doctors yeah. where they're prescribing a lot of these. And then you have patients who manipulate the system by going... We have a number of people in California who go to 50 doctors, 50 doctors in the space of a year to get uh, these dangerous drugs. So you have the criminals, you've got the addicted uh, patients who are going to multiple doctors, and then you have the dirty doctors who are profiting from this kind of abuse of...